issue. We should do what's necessary to take care of ourselves. But don't allow fear to get in. Satan is the corporate behind fear. Last week, I think I said, just bring everybody up on review. I said, Satan is a spirit of fear. And fear is perverted faith. So each one, faith will operate by this God system. Fear operates based on Satan's system. Now, I need to let you understand something. Satan is the God of this world system. I did not say he was God, but he's the God of the world system. Okay? A lot of people are saying, uh, I hear things on Facebook, they're saying that, you know, the reason that this is going on because the people, people haven't been coming to worship God and God's doing this so he can come worship. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not biblical. Okay? Some things like that might have happened under the law, but that's not biblical. We are under grace. Amen? Well, what about Ananias and Fire? First of all, Ananias and Fire, they weren't saved. <laughs> Amen? God is love. God's not doing it. Satan is the corporate behind it, and he's using fear to get Christians to fear. Now, we, we want to read our foundation scripture. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. See, now, whatever God, I have to wait, whatever God says about you, that's what you are. I'll say it again. Whatever God says about you, that's what you are. Amen. For what he says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. Now notice, before you accepted Jesus Christ, Satan was your father, and you were fear-based. Now you got to understand something. The world operates by fear. People that are not saved operate by fear. But you as a believer are supposed to operate by faith, not by fear. But watch this, what he said. For God's not given us the spirit of fear, but a power. So there, you got to understand something. You got power. You got power against this coronavirus. You can use your authority and your ability to take charges. I'm going to show you some scriptures today where you get in the word, that's your safety zone. That's your safety zone. Amen? You need to be confessing, hey, long life he satisfied me. Amen? But he said, but he's given us power, and what else he can? And of love. Now, you're going to learn today what perfect love cast out fear. Love is supposed to be your motivation during this situation that's going on, not fearful. See, fear will make you do things that you might not want to do. Fear is torment. Notice, in the last part, he said, and of a sound mind. Well, you, you know, you're not going to have a sound mind. In Romans 12, 1, it said, be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to the way this world operates, but be conformed to God's word. And then you will have soundness of mind. You're not putting, spending no time putting the word. You're putting all that fear you hear on the news. I'm not saying you should stay up to date, but watch it all day. It's not good for you. It'll put fear in you. It'll scare you, It'll scare you to walk out your door. You'll be, you'll be hibernating. <laughs> Amen? And that's what can happen. Amen? Now, I want to get into some scriptures. I want to say a couple other things before I get into these other scriptures today. We walk by faith. Not by sight, not based on what our physical senses tell us. Fear can take you down. I'm going to say it again. Fear can take you down. Faith can take you up. Now I'll say it again. Fear will take you down, and faith will take you up. Now, the Bible said, without faith, it's impossible to do what? Please God. Amen. Now, I'm excited about this, what I'm going to get into today. Now, here's the thing. Everybody blaming God. And Satan was stripped of all his power. He has no power. What he has is suggestions in your mind. So his objective through meteor, all these avenues, is to put fear in the, into you, and then he will use your power to get things done as a believer. Amen? Now, a person that's not saved, he has total power. They are a slave to Satan. And they are motivated by Satan if you're not born again. Amen? Glory to God. Now, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. And I said this, the fact that people saying this is God's program to teach the church something, please stop it. I'm going to show you something. Who's be the corporate behind? I said the devil is. Verse 14. For so much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That's who? Now notice there. He said 
the devil was the one that had the power of death. Now, like I said earlier, Satan has been stripped of all his power, so the only thing he can do is try to use your power as a believer. And when you, when you give voice to fear, you give Satan power. I'll say it again. When you give voice to fear, you give Satan power. Amen? So the, the, the major discussions all the time should not be talking about the coronavirus. <laughs> you got to spend some time in the Word. Amen? Glory to God. So guess what? He said the devil had the power of death. He don't have it now. But he's still trying to kill people. And the only way he can kill them is to put suggestions in their mind. Just like anything that goes on in this world, it, it, it's a mindset. This, this whole virus thing is basically uh, somebody did something, but it was put in their mind first. And then once it's done, then Satan, what he does, he capitalizes on it. Amen. Proverbs 29, verse 25. We're going to first look at the King James, and then we're going to go to the New, New Living Translation. The fear of man bring a snare. But whosoever put his trust in the Lord shall, 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 shall be what? What does it say? Shall be what? Safe. If you put your trust in the Lord, you shall be safe. So you ought to be declaring that I'm safe. I'm safe. See, you, instead of fearing, oh, it might get me, you know. <laughs> that's, that's not what we do, ladies and gentlemen, believe it. Amen? Now, watch the New Living Translation. Give me more clarity. Fearing people is dang a dangerous trap. Now, what do you think the fear? Well, people, I'm not fearing people. I'm fearing the virus. No, the people is the one that give you the information. So you're fearing what the people are saying. <laughs> fearing people is dangerous, a dangerous trap. But trusting the Lord means what? Safety. Trusting God means safety. You want to be safe, you got to trust in the word. Let me ask you a question. God said in his word, he said, my covenant will not break nor all the things that come out of my mouth. Now, let me ask you this question. Whether you know it or not, you're going to know now. 99% of everything in the Bible has already come to pass that God said. Now, but you rather believe your famous newscaster could be telling you a lie, believe him over God. God said, you trusted him, you're going to have safety. Then you question that, are you really trusting the Lord? Are you just, when you feel like doing something, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you right now. Are you spending time? Trust is spending time with God so that you can trust him. Get in his word. Spend time. Then you can trust. If you're not spending time in the word, you're not going to trust God. Because doubt and fear are going to rule in your mindset. Amen? And that's where a lot of people are at, including Christians. Amen? Now, Job 3, Job chapter 3, verse 25. I'm going to show you, and you heard the story about all the balls that was on Job's head. And Job's wife said, why don't you curse God and die? What a great revelation from the wife to tell you, right? Curse God and die. And Job, Job didn't do that. Job still trusted God. Now think about it. Job thought in the beginning that God was the one that put this on him. He realized Satan was the corporate behind it. But watch this very careful. Job said, for the thing which I greatly fear. What did he say? Greatly fear is come upon me, on me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Notice he was afraid. So guess what? His fear attracted that situation that happened to him. So you spend time being fearful, guess what? You can attract the virus. You know what? Satan will use somebody to come by you, bump into you, he motivates things through people. Amen? Now, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Now, praise God. Psalms 23, and we're going to look at verse 4. I'm, I'm giving you scriptures that's going to help your life. This is what it's all about. We're here because we love you. And we want you to get the word. And the word is supposed to be so vital in your life. Amen? Now, Proverbs, I'm going to say Psalms 23, verse 4. 
And, and I used to, as a child, I used to quote the whole chapter, Psalms 24, from 23, verse 1 on down. But when we're going to do verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And you can call what's going on right now kind of a shadow of death because people are dying. He said, I fear no evil. He said, I fear no evil. Why are you not going to fear any? For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort. And understand, the Holy Spirit, part of the Godhead, lives on the inside of you. He's with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, lo, I am with you unto the end of the earth. So God's with you. So guess if the Holy Spirit is walking around in you, you got God's power on the inside of you, don't you realize you have authority over this? You have authority. But see, if you look at yourself based on how the world sees you, you're going to have a problem. Because the world is based on fear. And you base your life on the, on the word. If God says you're the righteous of God, that's who you are. If God says you're overcomer, you're overcomer. The Bible said this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith overcomes the world. So that means anything that's going on in the world, you're going to overcome. Amen? Glory to God. God is your source. God is your provider. Amen? Praise God. Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, 17. Just give me some scripture. I'm just taking you through the Bible. You can fuss with me all you want. I'm taking what the Bible says. I don't want to hear your opinion, what you think God's doing, what God did in the Old Testament. We are in a new covenant. We are on a better covenant built on what? Better promises. We have a better covenant than they had. Now, if you want to operate in that old covenant, that covenant says... If you do this, God will do this. If you don't do this, God won't do this. We're not under that covenant. So you're trying to operate in that covenant. There's a lot of curses under that covenant. Now, as a believer, the Bible says you've been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. The Bible says by his stripes ye are healed. See, you are ready to heal. I think that's 1 Peter 2.24. You're all ready to heal. That's Satan trying to make sick. You're the heal. <coughs> now, so the fact that you're healed... Now, don't get out of the word just because you cough. I mean, get more <laughs> people. Amen. We can't get too spooky, y'all. Isaiah, what did I say? Isaiah 54, 17? 14, rather. In righteousness shall thou be established. Now, what did he say? In righteousness you shall be what? Established. You will be established. That means you're going to be fixed. Amen? Standing strong. He said, thou shalt be far from oppression. See, with this thing going on, people are getting oppressed. People are getting depressed. But why? For thou shalt not what? Fear. Notice, thou shalt not fear. You should take this message and listen to it over and over again to drive out all that fear. Put faith in and drive out fear. Put faith in and drive out fear. Put faith in and drive out fear. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how you drive it out. The only way you're going to drive it out, ladies and gentlemen, you can't sit there and say, God, take this fear away. He's not. God, take this sickness away. He's not. He already took it away 2,000 years ago that you were healed. And you, gotta be, you just got to receive what he's already done. Amen? But why? He said, but thou shalt not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Wow. It shall not come where? Near thee. It shall not come near thee. Amen. I mean, that's, that's exciting. Now, Proverbs chapter 3. Here's the deal. Well, we got to use some common sense. Let me say something to you. If your common sense is out of line with the word, it's not really common sense. It's stupidity. Amen. Now, watch this. This is what... He said, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Notice he said, lean not to your own, but trust him. Don't lean to your understanding. Now watch the next verse very careful. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Do you wake up every day, Lord, with this situation going on, Lord? Direct me today, God. Lord, guide me where I should go, when I should go, what I should do in a situation. Ask God to guide you. 
Amen. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge God through this situation. Lord, I just want to thank you and I want to worship you. That by his stripes I'm healed. No plague shall come near me, Lord. And I just want to give you glory and honor and praise for it. That, Lord, I'm victorious in all, every area of my life. I want to thank you for that, God. See, those are things you got to do. Long life should satisfy me. I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Father. I have more, all my needs are supplied, already supplied according to your riches. All my needs are met. A acknowledging what God has said about the situation. Not, not spending all your time saying what the world is saying that's going on. Now, there's a degree. Get your knowledge. Do the necessary things you're supposed to do. Now, oh, you may say that, Lord. Be very careful. And that means, Pastor, I just pray and I go around anybody and do it. No, no, that's not what we're saying, ladies and gentlemen. Do, do your part, what the government is telling you to do. It's not, that's not out of line with the word. They're telling you to do. Do, that, do. do their part and then guess what? And let God work with that. That's how you do it. See, some people, now, if you don't have to be in a situation, now, some people that are working in hospitals, they're, they're in a situation like they're trying, they're trying to help others. You understand? So they're putting their lives on their lives to try to help us. Amen? And we thank God. And you ought to be praying for them. Amen? Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Now, 1 John chapter 3. Verse 21. Now, here's, here's Satan's objective with the fear. What are you going to try to do to you? And you know, I go in the store, you know something? People, you know what, I mean, every, we know they buy toilet paper and paper towels, and, but you know what else they buy? They buy junk. I go in the vegetable set, lo, lo, loads of vegetables there, fresh vegetables. Ain't John. Now watch this. This is to say the man. Beloved, you are the beloved. If our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence toward God. Now watch this very careful. So what Satan is going to do is rob you of confidence, put guilt, condemnation, fear, so he can rob you of your confidence toward God, what God said. God said you are already in safety because you trust him. You got to believe that. Never mind what else is going on and you're trying to go on in your heart or even in your mindset. That's Because he, he really can't touch your spirit. But what he's trying to do is put, build on a mindset of condemnation and guilt on the inside of you. I, in our society, Blaming somebody else for something else all the time, just bl the blame game, is nothing but fear. To put fear in you. So guess, so you don't trust. That's what it's all about. Assassinate a person's character so, somebody, so you don't trust them. That's Satan's game. That's his whole plot. And Christians don't know that. Amen? Now, watch this. First John... Chapter 4, verse 18. Now watch this very careful. There is no fear in love. Are you... Lo you got to realize, first of all, in order for you to love other people, you got to realize that God loves you. You got to realize something. God already knew this thing was going to happen already. We might have not known, but he knew. There's no fear in love, but watch this. But perfect love, or the God kind of love, or the agape kind of love, it casted out fear. See, you're not walking in love. See, you're not loving folks through this. Hey, fear going to deal with you. Because perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. How many times you wake up and say, Lord, I just want to thank you for this day, Lord. I want to give you glory and honor and prayer. I thank you, Father, you love me. Father, that you love me just like you love Jesus. And I thank you for it. That's, see, that's worship. Now watch this. He that fear, so when you're fearing, he that fear is not made perfect in love. 
So if, if fear is your motivation and everything is going fear, you're not, you're not perfect in love. You're not allowing agape to flow through you. Well, how do I do that? Listen to things in love. Go to, uh, I think it is 1 Corinthians, the 14th, I think 13th chapter, tells you all about love. I don't insist on my own way. Matter of fact, I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm going to do that. Can you, can you pull that up there? Go to 1 Corinthians. Because everybody wants to insist on their own way nowadays. 1 Corinthians. And I'll tell you what I'm going to read down to Jackie in a second. Matter of fact, I'm going to do the Amplified. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going to look at Verse 4. Verse 4 from the Amplified. There you go. Now watch it. See, these, you can go to the King James, but I'm going to give you more clarity going to Amplify. Love endures with patience. Seventy love. Love, seventy. Love is kind of a thoughtful and is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5 now. <laughs> love endure with patience. Where are, where are 1 Corinthians, what did I just do? Go, to, go back to verse 4. There you go. Love endure is patient and severity. Love, I say that word wrong? Huh? Serenity, right. I thank you all. Serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful and is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It's not. Verse 5. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoking. Provoked rather, <laughs> nor oversensitive and easily angered, is not, not taking account of a wrong it endured. It doesn't take account of a suffered wrong. Verse 6. Huh? That's the wrong amplified. Go back to the classic. I apologize. The wrong amplified. We got to go, go back to the beginning. That's okay. You learn something from that. Glory to God. Verse 4. Love endures as long as patient and kind. Love is never envious nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vain glory. Does not display itself hauntly. Next verse. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude. See, see if you're you operating these things, that's not love. It's not unmannerly. And does not act unbecoming. Love, God love in us, does not insist on its own right or its own way. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy, fretful, or resentful. It takes no account of evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. You know, I see people... Getting in arguments, somebody stepped in front of them on the line. I was in a major store. Got all, got all of having a big discussion. You got in front of somebody? Hey, I'm not going to stand there and fuss with somebody because they get in front of me. Amen? <laughs> Believe me, we ain't going there. Verse 7. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Everything. Even fear, it bears up. Under that, it is ever ready to believe the best of every person. See, our society today, somebody say something about somebody on TV, the president, anybody. They say, people believe it first. You're supposed to think the best of every person. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances. And it endures everything without weakening. See, now, how are you going to put yourself in position? Now, fear will try to grip me. It will try to grip everybody. But we go back and we stay with what the words say. It's going to try to come at your mindset, but you go back to the word. Verse 8. 
Love never fails, never fades out, or becomes obsolete. It, people want to think love is obsolete. No, it's not. Or come to an end. That's the God kind of love. As for prophecy, the gift interpret divine will and purpose, it will fulfill and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth, God's word. That's what's going to happen eventually. But that's not what has happened now. Now, praise God. Now, this is something you're supposed to be quoting on Psalms 1, verse 11. And this is what we're going to close out on, probably. Wow. Psalms 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Now, you in the secret place. The Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. So you in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Now watch what he said in the next verse. This is Moses wrote this. He said, I will say of the Lord. You're going to say, you're going to say what the Lord said. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Notice that word trust. Go and not trust in God. Lean not to your own understanding, I quoted earlier. Trust in God. Verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from, from the snares of the fowls and from the noisy peasant, them demons. Amen. Trying to mess with your mind. Now watch this. He shall cover thee up with his feathers. That's the angels. That's the angels. You got, you got angels all around you. He shall cover thee up with his feathers and under his wings shall I trust and his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now watch this. Next verse. Nor for the pestilent that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes the noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Corona's fire, you shall come, come nigh thee. Amen. Next verse. Only with thy eyes shall behold and see the rewards of the wicked. Verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Now watch this. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. What does it say? No evil shall befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. That's a good confession to make every single day. Amen? Now go to verse 11. For he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now, it goes back to this thing, trusting in God. Leaning not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. How do you do that? You go to the word. You go to the word. See, we have to take and speak the situation. You want to do that, Lord? Okay. Um, mark the, I can do it now. Mark the, um, the 11th chapter, verse 12, we're going to start at. I hope this is helping you. Go over this. Now watch this very carefully. And on the morrow, when they went, when they were come unto Bethany, he was hungry. Notice it says Jesus was hungry. Verse 13. And seeing the fig tree afar off, Having these, he came, if having he may find anything thereof. And when he came, then he found nothing but leaves, for the times of figs was not yet. Not father that tree. That tree had leaves. That tree should have been producing. It was not producing. Now watch verse 14. See, this is when you got to speak to things. You got to say things. You got to use your authority. And words have authority. God says, my word shall not be turned me, to me void. It shall accomplish what I send it to do. It will prosper in what I send it to do. And Jesus and said unto him, no man eat fruit from thee hereafter forever. Notice this. And the disciple heard him. They heard Jesus talking to a tree. Now, what's that scripture of life when I'm there? I'll get to that in a minute. 
hold your place right there. We're going to go back to that in a minute. We're going to get to the rest of the story. But I want to show you something. Go to um, Romans chapter 8, verse 2, I think it is. I think that's it. What's that scripture? For the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I need that. Help me, Holy Spirit. I can't get it. I don't know which one. Anyway. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ, you have made me free from the law of what's sin and death. See, the law produces death. So you got to start saying, I'm free from the law. I'm free from sin. Now go back to that a minute. I can't find that. I'm just going to quote that scripture. For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen? I think I... Hold on a minute. I can get it. See? These these phones are not just used for um, social media. (laughs) Y'all hear what I just said? Not just used for social media. Those watching by internet, I know you can't, I can't hear you, but I'm believing you heard me. Amen. (laughs) Glory to God. Now, praise God. Let me get that. Just bear with me. Okay. I guess I can get it. Okay, here it is. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures after this. Go back to, um, oh, you got it for me? No, she got it. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, he said. He said, I'm crucified, but I live. Yet not I, he said, not my old man don't live, but Christ liveth where? In me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So guess what? The same faith that Jesus had, he gave you. Now go back to the tree. Jesus spoke to the tree. So that means you can speak to your circumstance in the situation. You can tell that virus, be dissolved in the name of Jesus. Speak to it. Next day, turn around and say, you are ready to dissolve. Amen? Look at verse, um, back to, um, we're going to go down to Mark 11, verse 22. Because the rest of the story don't have nothing to do with that. He was talking about something else. He went on, and the situation came on with the fig tree. But watch this. Remember it said, Jesus heard him? And Jesus answered and said unto him, have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. You just read, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We all said, you have the same spirit of faith, same faith that Jesus had. And Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God or the God kind of faith. Now watch verse 23. I missed something. Go back to verse 20. That's all right. Because I want you to see this. Go back to verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the what? Root. See, the word will go to the root of the problem. Now verse 21. And Peter called in remembrance and said to him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered. Now verse 22. This will give you more clarity. And Jesus answered to him, have faith in God or the God kind of faith. Verse 23. But verily I said, who shall of us shall say unto the mount? A mountain can be a literal mount or a hindrance in your life. Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. Shall not doubt when his heart or fear in your heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Well, Pastor, I heard that script before. That's, that's old school. I, I, I remember a minister one time, he was, he, was, he was oppressed and he was depressed. And a well-known minister, 
He said, oh, he's at the hotel. I could talk to him about my, what I'm going on. And guess what he pulled out? This scripture. <laughs> Billy, I said, who should have said this mountain? He's told him, you got to speak to your situation. You can't sit there, oh, God, help me. I'm feeling oppressed now. Oh, he, he, God's not going to take your oppression away. He gave you authority. He's not going to remove fear from you. You speak to the fear. Fear, you cannot come nigh me in the name of Jesus. You speak to the fear. Amen? Now, I'm done with that part. I just want you to see that you can speak to the circumstances. There you go. Where is that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, look at the um, Um, praise God. I just want to say this to you. Remember, God loves you. He's with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I praise God that this message will encourage your life. I mean, we went around the way a little bit, but you know what? It's the word. It's the word. And, and the word is what will vitally change your life. Amen? Praise God. Well, glory to God. We'd like to give you the opportunity to sow seed. The Bible says that he which sowed sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen? God don't want you to do it grudgingly. But this is the time you need to sow seed. This is not the time to say, well, I'm going to hold back on my ties. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. You go to our website, just go to www.faithlove.org and click on giving. Text giving, 973-355-7719. Whether you know it or not, whether you know it or not, giving is worship. And you're supposed to worship God, not somebody forcing you to give. When you give out of a cheerful heart, you give because you love Almighty God. That's why you live, give. It's important that you give. So the only thing I ask you to do is do what Almighty God tell, tell you to do, and that's all we ask you to do, amen? And also, if you want to mail uh, your orphan, you can mail it to P.O. Box 200491, New, New Jersey, 07102. Or if you want to call us later, you can call dial 973-577-70. Eight, four. We want you to know we love you. Amen? Now, I'd like to talk to you about something. Some of you might have heard this message, you're not born again. You don't know whether you're going to die tomorrow, whether you're going to heaven or hell. But I'd like to make it very simple. You, you're in the world, you're going through something. You want to get that fear spirit out of you that's in there, which is of the devil, and get born again. So I'd like to make it very simple. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God, I'd like you to repeat this after me. Say, so, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for me and on the third day he rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. Jesus, you are now my Lord and Savior. Satan, I renounce you now. Jesus is my Lord. Now, if you just said that prayer, I want you to know you just got born again. And the angels in heaven are having a party over you because you are heaven bound. There's nothing that, that you can do not to go to heaven now except refuse, except Jesus is Lord and Savior. That's pretty well it. Amen? Now, so what I'd like you to do now is click on, go click on, give to God's love on our website, which you're there, okay? There's some material you can read to know who you are. I encourage you to get hooked up to a church. I know the situation you might not be going right now, but get hooked up. We can do anything to help you. Hey, we're, we're, we're here to help you, okay? Another thing you can do, listen to some of the videos that you have there. Start listening. Go, go to the website. It's a good material. You can listen, enjoy it. You can get us on YouTube, whatever you want. But go get the word. Take your Bible out. 
listen to the word. You have the scriptures even on the screen. You can read them on the screen if you don't have a Bible. Amen? Praise God. We want you to know we love you so very much, and God loves you. Okay? Until we come airing with you again on the internet, we love you, and God loves you, and have a blessed and prosperous day. Now in him to able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. Go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.